When you're designing a digital workspace for your students, you may find that there are parts of the document that you would like to prevent students from being able to edit. In this video, we will share some tricks that you can use when you are designing a workspace in PowerPoint to create a more controlled digital workspace for your students. So let's say that I'm building out this interactive workbook in PowerPoint. And my goal here is to introduce students to Venn diagrams using concepts that they're a little bit more familiar with. So on this slide, I wanna create an activity where the students will be able to click and drag each of the superheroes into the appropriate location on the Venn diagram. So when I built this slide, I started with just a background image. This is just like a picture of a chalkboard. Then to build the Venn diagram itself, I just inserted three different circles. And then finally, I used a text box in each one of those circles to label the Venn diagram. Once I had my Venn diagram created, then I added all of these images of the superheroes that you see over here on the sides. Now when the students use this slide in their workbook, I want them to be able to click and drag the superheroes and move them around the slide, but I'd like to lock the Venn diagram itself and the background so that they can't be edited or deleted by the student. So one simple way that we can do this is to use the slide that we've built to create an image, and then we can set that image as the background of a slide. So first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this slide by clicking on the thumbnail on the left, I can press Command and C at the same time to copy, and then I'm going to press Command and V at the same time to paste that copy of the slide. On the first slide, I'm going to delete all of the parts of the slide that I want the students to be able to edit leaving only the parts of the slide that I want to lock in the background. So in other words, on slide one, since I want the students to be able to move the superheroes, I'm going to go ahead and delete the superheroes because that's the part that I want the students to be able to interact with. But I'm going to leave the background, I'm going to leave the circles on my Venn diagram, and I'm going to leave all of my text. So I'm left with just what I want to be locked into place on my slide. Now on the second slide, I'm gonna do the exact opposite. On this slide, I'm gonna delete everything that I've left on my first slide. And I'm gonna leave all of the pieces that I want the student to be able to edit. So I can delete this background. I can also delete the circles that I used to draw the Venn diagram and I'm gonna delete all of my labels for my Venn diagram as well. So basically at this point, I have two slides. Slide one is everything that I want to lock into place. So I'm gonna use this slide to create a background image that I can then insert into slide two. Once that image is set as the background, then the students will be able to still move the superheroes around on the page, but they won't be able to edit that image that I've put in the background. So to do this, I'm gonna select the first slide. And up in my top menu bar, I'm gonna choose File and then Export. Under File Format, I want to select JPEG. And I also want to make sure that the Save Current Slide Only option is selected. Finally, I want to choose a location to save the image where it's going to be easy for me to find in a minute. So for now, I'll just leave that location as my desktop. I can click export. Now it may not look like anything has happened, but if I go to my desktop, I now have a JPEG with the image that I'm wanting to lock as the background of my slide. So from here I can go back to my PowerPoint, 
And this time I'm going to select the second slide. Now this is the slide that I want the students to be able to edit. I want to take the image that I've just exported from my first slide and I'm going to insert it as the background of this second slide. So to do that, I'm going to select the design ribbon and then I'm going to choose the format background option. In the menu on the right, I'm going to select picture or text fill and then I'm going to choose insert under picture source so that I can select that image that I just created that's stored on my desktop. I can click insert and now that image is the background of the slide. So if I use this as my slide in my student workbook, the students will be able to move the images of the superheroes to the appropriate place of the Venn diagram, but they won't be able to edit the Venn diagram or the background. One last thing to consider is that you may want to save two versions of the workbook that you created. One that you can share with students to use in edit, and another personal copy that you use to create the workbook. Having that original copy of the PowerPoint with all of the slides that were used to build the student workbook will make it much easier to make edits to your future workbook since you will not be able to edit the background of the student workbook. To do this, I'm going to go to File in my menu bar and I'm going to select Save As. I'm going to choose a location And I'm going to rename my workbook. This one I'm just going to call Venn Diagrams Workbook Build. Now I'm going to save a second copy that will be the version that I share with students. So once again, I'm going to go to my menu bar. I'm going to select File and Save As. And this one I'm going to call Venn Diagrams Student Workbook. Now since this is the student version, I can go ahead and delete that first slide that I used to build the background because really all the student needs to access in the workbook is that second slide. So if I click on the thumbnail for slide one and press delete, I now have that single slide workbook that I'm ready to share with my students. So I can hit Command and S to save the change or I can go to File and Save. And now I have two versions of my workbook. One that I can share with the students that just has the single slide for them to edit. And another copy of that PowerPoint that I used to build those slides so that if I need to open that and make changes to the student workbook in the future, I can do so.